the uh, first words I spoke in the original phonograph. A uh, little piece of practical poetry. Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. What was Thomas Edison's greatest invention? Thomas Edison's greatest invention is the process of systematic innovation. The very notion of research and development, which we now take for granted, was invented by Thomas Edison. And the idea of linking research and development to production, manufacturing, marketing, and sales, that idea didn't exist before. Prior to Edison, invention, innovation, was considered to be pretty much the random product of a lone genius. But Edison said, I will create an invention factory. We will turn out a minor invention every 10 days and something major every six months. That's his most revolutionary and profound world-changing invention, the system for innovation. We've consolidated Edison's approach to innovation literacy in what we call the five competencies for innovating like Edison. And we call them competencies because they're, they're skill sets that you can actually develop. And the five competencies are a solution-centered mindset, kaleidoscopic thinking, full-spectrum engagement, mastermind collaboration, and super-value creation. So we have about 40 minutes left, and this is a five-day intensive residential seminar. So what I think we'll do is we'll hit the highlights. <laughs> this really is a system for innovating like Edison. In other words, each competency sets the stage for the next competency. The first three competencies set the stage for the last two competencies. You need all five competencies if you want to really create an innovative culture in your organization. And within each competency, there are five elements, which are the practical things you can do to embody the competency. And all the elements build on one another as well. So I think what we'll do is we'll spend, since it is a system. You need the, f the first competency sets the stage for all the others. And the first competency is probably the most relevant to your personal success and fulfillment and happiness. Because Edison strongly believed that the principles of personal fulfillment and success were the same as those of organizational innovation. In each of these elements, what Sarah and I did is to say, okay, let's take all of our combined more than 50 years experience of working with organizations on being innovative. What's the single most important point of leverage for the reader to apply this in their life, in their organization. We couldn't, you know, you could write a whole book on each one of the elements, but we, what we have to do is to consolidate in the single most powerful point that you could apply yourself. So, solution-centered mindset has five elements. Align your goals with your passions. Cultivate charismatic optimism. Seek knowledge relentlessly. Experiment persistently and pursue rigorous objectivity. I love this, this particular image of Edison. You see his passion, his intensity. He said, I continue to find my greatest pleasure and so my reward in the work that precedes what the world calls success. In other words, his passions were fully aligned with his goals. He loved what he was doing so much that the process wasn't separate from the result or the fame or the achievement or the money. Yes, he liked all that, but that's not what it was about for him. It was about his love of what he did every single day, the, the quest for innovation. So do you know this uh, acronym for goal setting? It's a good one. SMART. Set SMART goals. So your goals need to be specific. You need to be able to measure them, otherwise you don't know if you achieved them or not. The A stands for accountable. You're accountable for achieving your goals. If you're setting goals in a team, you have to be sure who's accountable for what. Clear, obvious, simple. The R stands for relevant. Relevant to what? Well, in a company, your mission and your vision. If a goal isn't relevant to the mission and vision, don't set it. Personally, you want to set your personal goals, make sure they're relevant to your highest aspirations and your, your values and your life purpose. And the T stands for timeline. Napoleon Hill said, a goal is a dream with a deadline. It was clear to me the internal dynamics of how Edison set goals. 
they're in line with universal principles of goal setting and manifestation. But I thought, here's the supreme role model for making your goals come true. I mean, I'm going to light the world. That's a pretty big goal. I'm going to invent the recording industry. I'm going to invent the motion picture industry. This is somebody who knew how to manifest really big goals. So I said, well, what did he do? And then I figured out, okay, here, here are the different elements that he brought to his goal setting. Then I'm thinking, how do I convey them to you in a memorable way so that you can integrate them into your own life and into your company? I came up, I had this aha, this light bulb went off in my head, and I came up with the perfect acronym for Edison's goal manifestation method. And it's Edison. Right? And E stands for emotional. You have to set your goals with your gut as well as your, your mind. Unless you engage emotion in goal setting, the goals aren't set robustly enough in terms of your limbic system. In other words, unless you get the midbrain involved, you're just not going to remember the goal enough to really harness all your mental focus to come up with ways of achieving it. So emotion has to be involved. The D stands for decisive. This is tricky. Here you've got to decide with the full force of your being to manifest the goal, even if you can't clearly see the path to its completion. The I stands for integrated. Integrated with all your other goals. One of the biggest ways people go wrong in goal setting and attempts to manifest their goals is they set goals that are in conflict with one another. People on a personal level do this all the time. They set they set goals for their career or their finances, but they haven't integrated them with their spiritual life, their relationships, and their physical health, for example. And organizations do the same thing. We have goals for productivity and solving problems and uh, finding new clients, but we don't integrate those with our goals for recruiting the kinds of people who will help us do that, just for example. The S stands for sensory. And what this means very simply is to bring all your senses to the imagination of the goal. Right? So literally bringing the senses to bear, not just picturing it, but imagining the sounds, the taste, the smell, the feel of your success. The O stands for optimistic, which you have every reason to be if you learn how to set goals like this. This is what Edison did. And the N stands for now. And the now has a double meaning. It means obviously begin manifesting your goal now. But it also means envision the achievement of your goal in present-centered terms. The second element is charismatic optimism. Edison loved to say, look on the bright side of everything. I love the word charismatic, too, because his optimism was so great that it affected everybody around him. He, he was able to make his people believe that they could do stuff that they didn't really think that they could do. But consistently, they did. He, his char charisma was so great that he got in investors to continue giving him money, even when he got no results. Failure after failure after failure. And he was so optimistic about his inevitable success, he, they'd keep funneling in the money. It's a very practical talent. There is no innovation without optimism. It's, it's, it, it's the optimistic notion that we can improve, that we can do something better, we can do something that nobody's thought of, that drives innovative thinking. Edison said, our greatest weakness lies in giving up. The most certain way to succeed is always to try just one more time. It's, it's, the more scientifically gifted, the better you are at what you do technically, the greater the danger of forgetting the end result that's needed in terms of some end user's experience. And it's not, and you've got to get away from the old paradigm that that's an either or. That model's history. You have to integrate the two. Right? Marketers and sales and customer relations people have to think like scientists, and scientists have to think like marketing, customer, sales people. Edison understood that 125 years ago.